Hello and welcome. Uh, in this video I'm going to teach you how to uh, track the motion of a particle using a program called JST, which is web-based. So this can be done on any, uh, any type of computer as long as you have a web browser. So first you need to have a movie which we're going to track. This one is called projectile.mp4 which I filmed on a high-speed camera at 500 frames per second. Let's just see what this looks like. So there you can see the small steel ball flying across the screen. And the important thing is that it's in MP4 format and you also have to know the uh, playback rate of the film. And you can do that by checking in the movie inspector. Here it's a, it has a playback rate of 50 frames per second. I also need to know the recording frame rate which was in my case 500 frames per second. Then we go into uh, a website called jst.lucadedemian.com. I'll put the link in the below this video. Delete any previous files you have there or projects, and then upload a file locally or from Drive, but I would recommend you upload the file locally. You can just upload it by dragging it into this box here. It'll take a few seconds to upload. And you'll be faced with this window. So the first thing is to give the project a name. This is arbitrary. I'm just going to call it, call it projectile. Then you have to enter the frame rate. Now this is the playback frame rate. And mine was 50. Then you have to enter a number here of frames to advance. You can either leave it at 1 or you can put it a number here, I, 10 works for me. It's the number of frames it's going to advance after each click, after each track, tracked point. Now I have to put in 0 0.1 here because my uh, <coughs> playback video is 10 times slower than reality. Remember I said that the record frame rate was 500 frames per second and my playback frame rate was 50. So here I have to add the speed of the video as 0 0.1 and then the rest I can leave as is. So I click Create. The first thing you'll see is it's put a uh, coordinate axis on there and you can drag this to anywhere on the screen. I'm going to put it right at the edge of the, uh, the cannon here where the ball comes out so that's going to be my origin where x is 0 and y is 0. Then I need to use a create a scale. That's three, three dots here. So I click there and create. Then I have to, it it's telling me, it gives some instructions down here in the bottom left of the screen. So I'm going to click, um, important thing with a scale is that it's in the same plane as the object which you are tracking. So I'm going to choose the width of this ballistic unit here as the scale. I know it's 60 centimeters because I've measured that in reality. So I'm going to click here and then here again and then enter 0 0.6. That's going to scale up all the pixels into the right uh, length units. The next thing I need to do is create a track. I do that using this uh, icon here. I'm going to call it a name. You can I'm going to call it ball, which is the thing I'm going to track. It can be anything here. It can be a number, it can be a name, it doesn't really matter. And I cre click Create. Now I'm ready to track my ball. So if I, before I do the tracking, if I just do use the right arrow down here, I'll see the ball advancing 10 frames at a time. So I'm going to choose to use this point as the first starting point, because I can't, or this one here. Now the way you do tracking of points is you hold down the shift key and then you click on the same part of the object each time. So I shift click and then it advances 10 in my case. Shift click, shift click, shift click and I'm going to keep doing this until I'm happy so I'll see you back in a second.
So now I have all the data I want and you see here it's made up a table of values. I've got times and x coordinates and y coordinates both in meters. So there we go. We've, we've uh, tracked the motion of our particle and we have time data and x data and y data. For the next part of this video I am going to export the data from JST and import it into GeoGebra ready for you to model using a function. Uh, to export the data from GST I click this icon here and give it a file name. It will export the file as an Excel file but I want to import it into uh, Google so I just drag and drop open the file in Google open it as a Google Sheet mark the time data copy paste into GeoGebra's spreadsheet app into column A do the same thing with my Y data you might want to choose the X data instead that's up to you depending on which function you want to model copy and paste into column B then the last thing I'm going to show you how to do is to then select these uh, columns of data and then import them as points into the GeoGebra window. Uh, this you do by selecting or highlighting columns A and B by dragging out and then secondary click and then create list of points. And there we have it. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you found it useful and hope to see you sometime. If you have any comments or queries please add them in the comments field below this film. Bye bye.